764 is ready to get back into service. We have uh, rested the crew. We've increased the skills of some of the officers. We also got a point in uh, crew point for diving speed. So we are ready to collect our orders and head back out to sea. Let's go take a look with yeah, Cologne Auto Top It and find out what our next Mission is going to be. Offizier, um die Befehle vom BDU weiterzuleiten. Wie kann ich Ihnen behilflich sein? Dies sind aktuelle Einsatzbefehle vom BDU. Streng geheim. All right, we are going to patrol this area. Looks like over again over towards Alexandria. Select. I don't know if they'll change the mission orders on the way, but at any rate, we are uh, good to go. Mr. Weber, you can stand down for now. We'll let the Cologne take her out. Uh, so here we are in, it's already April of 1944. We're actually kind of progressing through the war a little, kind of fast there. <laughs> I keep forgetting how far into the war we're already going. Uh, so we all got to do now is just click on the telegraph, ahead dead slow. That will free us from our moorings and send us out of port off into the balmy Mediterranean Sea one more time. So we'll see you once we're clear of the quays and out of the port and into the open Mediterranean Sea. Alright, so here we are out in the Med. A rather nice looking day. Only a few clouds in the sky. Uh, let's take a look at our current situation. So we have Mr. Thim with the navigation skill is now getting us up over 100% of knowing we, we know where we are more than 100%, which is uh, pretty awesome. As usual, we're going to try to sneak around Malta with the RAF station, try to avoid any planes there as we head off to our patrol zone. Maybe down in this part of the Mediterranean Sea, we'll see if we uh, might catch a ship or two. We always come back with more torpedoes than we, we used in our in the strictest necessity of our uh, patrol zone so maybe we'll catch a, a freighter or two down here i'm sure we'll see lots of fishing ships but we'll get about our business and uh, see what happens all right we have fishing boats aside we haven't really encountered much but we have broken the plane of patrol here so let's see, let me put mr ibikin on the radio room before we switch shifts here Quick report. Oh. Funk Telegram gesendet. So back up. <laughs> okay. I think we're going to submerge for a bit here in this storm. That's a little, uh, <laughs> a little intense for my guys. So we have been a couple of days wandering across the Mediterranean, shooting, finding fishing boat after fishing boat after fishing boat after fishing boat. And finally, looks like we've got some smoke on the horizon there. So we're going to head over there and see if we can make prosecute an attack on whatever this, well, hopefully it's an enemy ship, prosecute an attack on whatever this first actual contact of the, the uh, mission is. So first got to get over the horizon, find out what we're looking at, and see what's going on. So finally a chance to be a real submarine. All right, so we took the time to get out in front of this vessel. Um, we could do a uh, surface attack at night. The only problem is it's, there's a lot of moonlight out here, and I'm not super thrilled about that. It is the 
moon is currently behind the clouds, but we're getting a lot of moonlight. So I think we're going to pop down and take this guy in a normal submerged attack. All right, everybody. Let's go. Tauchen auf 30 Meter. Standseerohr besetzen. <clears throat> Alright, so the last one was just a whole bunch of me sinking ships the last video, so maybe this time we should talk a little bit more about theory and stuff. So I actually uh, caught up to the ship, I looked out, he was at my 342 going directly away from me, so that was I kind of put that down as his bearing line. Then I plotted a parallel course out about 7 kilometers, like, like you saw, and then we're now cutting back in. Again, we were going to do originally do a... a nighttime surface attack but with the strong moonlight I feel like it's probably better to get down under the water uh, as we're approaching let's see these all look pretty good so we're approaching the ship we're gonna throw the alarm back on <laughs> he's gonna go absolutely mad absolutely bonkers and then we will go down to four and one and take a look and see what the current surface situation is here. Oh, look at that. It's like one of those fishing boats. Ah, so he's coming. Now the, out, the angle on the bow is very shallow. I mean, it's probably like 10 degrees, if that. So we're actually going to stop all four in motion. Stop. And let him close right in. He should pass very close in front of us. We'll adjust as necessary so as he comes in if he's if he's getting more angle on the bow like if his angle on the bow is increasing um, that means he's kind of going out in front of us and we can uh, speed up a little bit if we want to keep you know the same relative angle on the bow so he passes right in front of us very close let me get my scope down again it's this moonlight out he might be able to see it from this distance but just let's get your distance on him so where he is at the moment I've got the periscope stabilization off, but I do have uh, auto top. It does have the skill, so he's not. This is not as unstabilized as it would otherwise be. But you can see it still has a lot of. Uh, let's go the other one. Let's go on top. It's easier on top this way for this one, I think. Uh, he's somewhere around there. So he's about four and a half kilometers. So we can even plot that. Let's see, four and a half kilometers at 296 degrees ish. Okay, two and a half kilometers, 296 degrees. Angle on bow very shallow. So let's go to the map. Do our map tools. So here we are. He is. Let's delete this. Uh, 296 is going to be 64 degrees um, off our, so it's uh, 360 minus 264, um, wait, 294, what did I say? Oh, no, I can't remember what I said. Let's go look again. Oh yeah, it's right here, 296, 296, right, so 60 degrees and then another uh, four degrees so 64 degrees off our port Thank you. 65 degrees and four and a half kilometers ish 65 right there and it's like I'll have to put that down and then uh, scroll out a little bit so we can move that Four and a half kilometers, 65 degrees, and we were guessing that he was like no more than uh, 10 degrees on our angle to bow. So that means that if he looked, he reported me to his skipper, he'd say it was 10 degrees off. So if we go 10 degrees and just run this, that means he's going to pass, he should be passing this way. So we're using the combination of our bearing to him, his angle on the bow to try to determine his true course. So he should be passing this way, 
which if we're accurate is about a kilometer less than a kilometer yeah 700 meters 800 meters that's pretty good we'll, we'll let's have some confidence and we'll actually turn just slightly this way to try Course to make it more see. of a 90 Line of 9 degree thing else. we'll um, turn on the motors dead it slow ahead just to get the nose swung around then we'll stop because we do not want to really get any closer again you can't really it's hard to keep a submarine submerged at when it's dead stop so reality what you'd probably be doing is just very very slow gyrations forwards backwards maybe just to kind of keep the boat uh, right underneath the surface can't you don't have that level of granularity with your with your telegraph there so we just kind of we just pretend that we can stop or basically stopped Let's just goose this a minute there we go and stop Alle machine stop which he's like right here holy cow that is that is 1.5 okay so now we can try doing a, a speed reading on him so it's basically going to be the front of the boat based on and where the end of the boat would fall so we'll give it a try you can use this tool or you can just use the the uh what do you call it the um stopwatch do the calculations yourself so passing the bow and then we're going to go somewhere like in the middle of the stern and imagine that that's his the stern point and all that does is you know how long the ship is you know how long it takes to pass so it's a meters per second how many meters whatever the length of the ship is and how many seconds it takes to pass that's your velocity and then this will internally convert it into in this case kilometers per hour and on the TDC that's going to be knots or you can do those calculations yourself if you just search up the conversion factor crap Sorry, right there stop and set this is 12 I, I, I believe that again this that's more accurate than my so we'll bring this nose down here Angle on the bow is probably closer to 40 now. Schussunterlagen aktualisieren. And his distance Lage is. Drei, neun, rechts. Use our internal prism. Here, up there, set. Oh yeah, that's he's close. Entfernung fünf, sechs, so we don't want him to get too much closer. It has to be 300 meters to arm. Let's take a look at our torpedo tube, so we're firing tube 2. His depth is, uh, he's got a draft of almost 9 meters, so we can safely throw our torpedo to about 7 meters, or maybe even 7.5. The further down on the hull it is, the more it's going to, the water pressure is going to be and the greater damage it's going to do. So that is good to go. The gyro angle is synced. He's it's so sharp coming out of the tube though that we're not going to fire till he's really in the 350 mark otherwise I don't even know if the torpedo could make that turn he might see my periscope wake but at this point it's too late to do anything all right so we velocity Aktualisiert. Geschwindigkeit sieben. angle on the bow is good distance is good everything's good I'll stop Alle Maschinen stop. and <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Before the torpedo was even out of the tube, he was telling me how long it's going to take. That's how close we are. Everybody brace for impact. Hopefully it's not a dud. Two, three, just in case. There we go, yeah. Good work, everybody. So that's kind of how you do it. So I was a little close there at the end. Not bad for our... Well, we'll watch this guy sink. I think he's sinking. Yeah. Yeah. Reitenbach, good, good call there. He never knew it hit him. Right until he said, Oh, a torpedo just hit me. Sinking on a pretty even keel. Oh, yeah, look at that. I know they are doing for early next year. 
should uh, have some sinking mechanics revisited. Good work, everybody. We can secure from Hello, General man. Alarm. We can get uh, Mr. Zap after our 30 minute save. Mr. Zap can load the torpedo tubes. And let's see, what else do we need to do at the moment? So we got surface. Go ahead. And surface the ship. And that was almost dead ahead of us, so we're going to rudder out in front of the sinking wreck a little bit so we don't get cleaned out by the sinking wreck. Secure Mr. Bayberg, good work. Uh, yeah, there's the engines there. Alright, so after we've uh, spent a few hours getting away from the scene of the crime, quote unquote, and we now at this point have at 2.27 in the AM have three contacts. This one is, let's just take a look at what he says. So this one is, where is it? High closing in. So I'm suspicious that's a warship maybe coming to try to figure out what happened over here. Uh, we've got one at 210 degrees out here, 30 to 50. Not in the mood to go chase after that guy since I'm more interested in kind of getting over in this part of the map. But we do have one more or less in our direction of travel. Uh, 341, 50 to 80, so somewhere out here. So we're going to try to head to this guy, avoid this guy, and ignore that guy is the plan. So much to my dismay, that one did turn out to be a fishing boat. Um, so we're going to modify our course a little bit, swing up around here. We haven't encountered the warship yet. Potential warship, I guess. I don't know what it was. But we'll just kind of swoop around, see if we catch anything coming in from the strait. Heading off to Alexandria or Haifa. Uh, so we'll pick you up when that happens. All right, so we just uh, got a new mission. We have, to, we have to go back to Alexandria and check out the air defenses. Identify the port guns by periscope. It is a priority matter overrides a current assignment that we now consider as finished. Wow, look at that. Firm. And then whatever this one was, we lost a transmission. So, banning that and heading to the port of Alexandria. We'll go, I guess, directly as we can. And... Still got plenty of fuel, we're at 74% fuel, so still doing great in that department. We'll travel at um, head half, see what we can get. Bring her around and head off that way. Okay, so we are submerged just outside the port. We are waiting for the sun to go down so that we can make our approach and scout out the uh, any aircraft guns. So we're just going to rest up people. We're going to improve our navigation. We got the over navigate ability to go up to 150 with Mr. Thim. So we'll put him working on that for a bit. I'm going to try to cycle everybody through so we're pretty, pretty much all well rested for when we uh, go in there tonight. So we'll just kind of pause here for a bit and see if we can wait for the sun to go down and then head in and find those guns. So if there's any warships, they're just at rest. All right, let's see if we can zoom in here. Tell you what, after after the war, 
We gotta get these guys some architects, because man, their houses are very blocky. So I guess that's, that's one. They are right there. Look at that. Two of them right next to each other, just past the fort. Then please pot us a course out of here. Course setzen. Langsame Fahrt voraus. Two. Let's go down to like. What's the? It's still pretty shallow here, so it's like 20 to 50. Let's go down to maybe like 15 meters. Tauchen auf 15 Meter. Tauchen auf 15 Meter. Aktuelle Tiefe. Tauchen out indeed. Meter. All right, we'll get clear of the port and then it says mission completed, but as we work our way back, we'll obviously find some more enemy vessels that are hopefully not fishing boats. Look at this. Fishing boat central. 20 Meter. 45 Meter. <laughs> So after chasing numerous fishing boats across the entire Mediterranean here, string of fishing boats, we have uh, Mr. Ibiken has a report of multiple contacts, 80 kilometers plus bearing 218. So that could be my first convoy in the Mediterranean after doing a couple tours here. So we're going to plot that out, which I figured out in order to make that work, you have to make sure that uh, in order to get this these tools to work none of the people can be selected or else it won't draw the tool so we're going to do that and we have to cancel that then we have to find out where it is so it's 218 80 plus kilometers then you have to click off of him to make that go away now you have to do the tool again 218 80 kilometers so night will do like 90 kilometers at around 218 and we'll put our time there so it's going to say 1205 and we're going to do convoy except let's take a look at what his other cancel that out take a look at what his other contact was 352 158 okay we're not going to worry about him for a minute well let's plot it anyway just in case 
something goes horribly wrong. What was it? 352, 50 to 80. So click off of him. There you go. 352, 50 to 80 is also going to be about 90. We'll put, oh no, 50 to 80, 65. We'll put that. And this is contact two. Ugh. Missed my point. Five, 50, 80, 352, right there, that one, and that's going to be 12, 07, and it's going to be contact 2, I'm going to override this, and where's my other, where's the other contact he had there? Two to three fifty to eight, three fifty four, huh? Stationary. Three fifty four, two to three. All right. So we're going to turn the boat around and head back this way, and we're going to track this con possible convoy and see are they going uh, inbound or outbound. How's everybody doing? Ich benötige hier etwas Unterstützung. Jawohl, ich kümmere mich darum. Got like 20 minutes or so. Let's do a final track here. We can at least get the direction, know which way we're angling. Like that. And so it's 355, 80 plus. 355, 40, 355. <laughs> okay. I guess they're going inbound, is what we're going to go with. Yeah, they're not going super fast, so if we plot out this way, we'll be fine. Surface. Get her up to full speed. And then we'll see if we can catch these bad boys. Okay, so we've got our radar detector. Mr. Rettenbach, Rettenbach on the radar detector has picked up some signals coming in, which is a good sign. That's a strong indication that we've got a convoy, warships. Well, not, the warships aren't a good sign, but so 38 degrees, 21 degrees, 9 degrees, closing in. So that means we're going to adjust our course a little bit. Well, still want to anticipate where they're coming. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep this heading. What's the distance on these guys? 10 to 20 kilometers. 10 to 20 kilometers. 20 to 30 kilometers. That's probably like the front end and tail end of the convoy. And there they are. Let's get a... Holy cow! Look at that. It's a good-looking convoy right there.
Frida Frida right there just over the horizon okay so we're gonna get to periscope depth and see if we can snorkel our way out in front of these guys and take it from there Right, guys as we get ready to take on the convoy here I think we're gonna leave this video uh, wrap it up here for today and then uh, bring you back for the next one for the thrilling conclusion to our probably looks like all night long convoy attack phase so hopefully you have enjoyed uh, our latest trek under the seas here uh, hopefully you'll be back next time this is Rick Rawlings saying thanks for watching and we will see you the next time we take a deep dive maybe the deepest dive yet, into U-Boat.